people make the mistake of believing that if most people believe a thing, that thing must be true. In a sense, you can call it the fallacy of consent. People naively believe in the authority of their collective genius. It's unthinkable to them that there are actually sinister people who are behind what you call public opinion or consent, who are in fact engineering public opinion and consent, who are spoon feeding you your beliefs by way of academia and entertainment, politics, news, using these institutions to subvert the autonomy that you think you have. I was a member of the United States Committee on Public Information. I found that ideas were weapons and were even more effective than bullets. They exploit your public opinion for their own interest, which is increased power. We worked out the engineering of consent. The consent of the public is basic to anyone's meeting his or her social goals. Your ideas are essentially theirs. They tell you what to believe. They insist that you lead with those ideas in the public square. And then they call it democracy or self-determination. Through these subversive means, they tell us who to hate. So many men with strange ideas are, are working for Goldwater. You, you hear a lot about what these guys are against. They seem to be against just about everything, but what are they for? They tell us who to love. Vote for President Johnson. And we genuinely believe that our love or hatred for a given public figure or historical figure is well-founded. Even though it's unlikely that you, on your own volition, have personally looked into these individuals to determine whether you like them or don't like them. The president refused to denounce white supremacy. The president is racist and this is a white supremacist, uh, the first overtly racist president since Barry Goldwater in 1964, presidential candidate, endorsed publicly by the Ku Klux Klan. Some might say that the safeguard against the tyranny of public opinion is the Constitution. It's true that the Constitution continues to be an inconvenient speed bump or obstacle for all-out demagogy. The reason I use the word speed bump or obstacle instead of roadblock is because it is an obstacle that can be circumvented and has been circumvented. How much weight does public opinion have in swaying a court case today as opposed to, say, 30 years ago? Well, it, it is great. The court of public opinion, I think, is just as impactful as the court of law, and sometimes even more, because the court of public opinion can impact what happened in the court of law. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, in a famous case, said that the public has already rendered a verdict on this issue. We're just here trying to find out how long is it going to take for the court to catch up. The court re is reinforced the social change that had already occur occurred in, in society. You see, the way that the demagogue jumps the proverbial constitutional hurdle is through the engineering of consent, the making and manufacturing of public opinion, convincing the electorate that the ideas that they've been spoon fed are in fact the beliefs of a intelligent and progressive so public. That. Black people have never taken a position that you describe. So it is not a question of what black people chose to do. It's what you, you choose to put in the mouths of black people. It is what you choose to, to project. It is not what any black people have ever said anywhere that you can put your it's finger on. It's what you on. choose to put into the mouth of the pollsters, as far as I can see. I Look put in the mouth of the leadership of the black community. Like most people, I have never seen a pollster. When those constitutional speed bumps or obstacles appear, in the way of laws enacted by Congress or a courtroom which insists on upholding the law and upholding the Constitution. The media and activists then weaponize public opinion against those constitutional fixtures in order to influence unconstitutional outcomes. Even though it is true that social engineering is a very real thing and you are constantly being influenced to think a certain way, to 
react and respond a certain way to certain events. This doesn't necessarily have to be a black pill thing for you. We read in the Bible about having a renewed mind. We read in the Bible about having a sober mind. And it's all the more reason why in this world, we must move with godly wisdom and discernment.